Is your idea of diplomacy an iron fist and a steel gauntlet? Do you love torturing mages just for the fun of it? Find an afternoon banging a hammer in your blacksmith soothing and a good way to spend your time? If so, middle-aged Ulm just might be the nation for you. Welcome to the Forges of Ulm. All right, boys, with this new format, feel free to pause at any time to grab the details. I'm trying to give you images of everything so you can copy it in your own games if you'd like. We have several pretender choices here. We have a pretender choice centered around expansion to help you out in the early game if you really need it. You're really just practicing and trying to test it out. We have a pretender choice in case you want to play like it's still Dominions 5, going pure scales with a little reinvigoration for your mages. And then we have a pretender choice if you want to win, the one that I use currently, and I've tested out quite a bit in Dominion 6 and it works well for me. Take a look at all three and see which one you prefer. All right, guys, for middle-aged Ulm, when it comes to researcher setup, your basic researcher setup, you really want to abuse your ability to forge owl quills and lightless lanterns to get your priest smith and your master smith up to ridiculous levels of research. And we'll go over forging a little bit later, but this is a basic setup. All right, and now we're going to briefly talk about early game expansion. I'm going to give you two examples. One example with your profit on turn two you should be expanding with, and one example with black knights as opposed to the troops you start with. You can go with either, whichever one you're more comfortable with, but I'll show you a quick expansion setup for both and a video or two of each one working individually. <laughs> Alright, now we're briefly going to go over troop buffs. We have a couple of the basics like stone skin, then we have iron skin, and temper armors. They do stack. Temper armors will add to the armor pieces on all of your soldiers, whereas stone skin and iron skin give them natural protection. So you definitely want to be abusing all of these. I put them in order from left to right of early game to later game, and you'll notice the earth power required goes up. And I've listed the two mages at the bottom that you basically want to be using to cast all of these buffs. On the left hand side, I have a master smith that rolled a random earth that puts him at earth three, makes it fairly simple to cast summon earth power and then cast any of the level four earth buffs on this screen if you really need to get yourself up to earth six to cast army of bronze for example a good way is put a pair of earth boots on him to get earth four cast summon earth power to get to earth five and then use an earth gem in the casting of it to get to earth six so keep in mind he would need four earth gems to be able to pull that off because he needs the one extra gem to raise his level for a temporary spell. You can do that, or there is an alternate, although a bit more difficult way. On your astral randoms, you can run them in communions. Now, running astral communions on Ulm is not really recommended because you'll roll so rarely enough mages with astral access that you won't really be able to set up a large communion to do anything out of the ordinary. However, you can utilize these guys to forge a set of items that enables you to force your mages into communions called the Sky Metal Matrix 
matrix and the slave matrix. If you put a sky metal matrix on the master and a slave matrix on several other mages to give yourself a little miniature communion, then you can have a solid communion setup based on the fact that you can forge items for super cheap. So that is definitely an option for you and something that I recommend late game if you really want to get into it because you need to abuse your forge advantage in every way and this is another way you can most certainly do that.
global spells. While for a nation who doesn't like to focus on magic, global spells might seem a little out there, we do like free earth gems. And if you get a chance, try to cast Earth Blood Deep Well in a cave. That'll give you five extra earth gems, which is essentially the same thing as finding five more earth sites, which is definitely valuable. Make sure if you're against too many elemental based nations, you put up something like elemental dampening, but be careful that you don't punish yourself with your own globals. <laughs> Oh my god. 